Hello, my name is Paul Oliver, and I'm going to talk to you today about TF Service in the Cloud, a real-world experience of a real-world team. Now, TF Service has recently changed its name to Visual Studio Online, and I may forget that a few times during this talk, uh, so forgive me, but Visual Studio Online is now the official term for TFS in the Cloud, uh, and it it's uh, it, it's been a great uh, tool for us. I want to share with you why and some of the roadblocks we came against. Um, first, I'll talk a little bit about my team. Uh, I work for a company in Omaha, Nebraska. We are practicing lean, uh, agile, Kanban style of development. Um, our team's called Team Granite. Uh, there's one team leader, uh, one lead developer, that's me. Um, uh, there are eight developers two quality assurance uh, and automation engineers, one business analyst, a, a database developer, and one to two business owners that sit with the team depending on the project or projects that we're currently working on. Uh, our development tool set is pretty, uh, pretty .NET Windows based, so we are using Windows 7, Visual Studio 2012, 2013, uh, TFS 2010 on-premise, uh, for our builds there and then we have this TF service also known as Visual Studio Online for our newer projects in the cloud. Uh, we're using TF version control for the on-premise builds and, and sites and then projects in the cloud um, we are using Git. So first I want to start talking about our customization of the build. We ended up taking the uh, first the, the template that comes with uh, TF Service with Visual Studio Online it's called the git template.11.xaml and we ended up modifying it for our needs we wanted to customize it, customize it quite a bit and ours is called double deploy git just because it deploys NuGet, it deploys MS deploy and it deploys um, uh, MSIs we created custom build activities um, in our Visual Studio 2013 uh, here is a idea of what it looks like when you edit the build. Uh, I'm using a standalone instance of Visual Studio 2013 RC1 here. Um, and what I'd like to recommend if you're going to modify the build, that you make a s solution and put a project in it. And this is a workflow library, uh, workflow activity um, project type. And then you can add your references that you need and not have to mess around with the GAC and inserting uh, DLL somehow into the folder where you need it. You can actually just reference them here and then you can um, uh, use them in your uh, build. I also want to recommend uh, if you do build your own build activities, uh, release the source code to the rest of the world so that other people can take advantage of them. Don't just release the DLL, release the source code because when it's time to upgrade to the latest version of Team Foundation Server, you're going to want to have that source code so you can reference the uh, the uh, Microsoft Team Foundation libraries that match um, match the build that you're building against the Team Foundation server you're building against. Our build that we modified, we the, it came out of the box with two things that we use: basically compiling code and then running unit tests. We modified it quite a bit. So one thing that we do is we version the assemblies. So uh, you get the version major, version minor, and then the number of days since one of our developers' birthdays, I, get, I think, um, and then uh, the, the build number of the day. So the first build would be dot one, the, f the second build would be dot two. We send an email to testers and business owners, giving them the opportunity to cancel the build if they are not ready for that build to, to maybe ruin their test that they're in the middle of or something. So we have this, uh, it's called a delayed build notification. We also run our unit tests. We run fitness tests for our service level tests. The build will break if the tests don't pass. We deploy our web applications uh, using MS Deploy. We can compile MSIs and deploy those to virtuals. And those are using an, an install shield ISM file to, to create a dynamic MSI. We also publish NuGet packages to a uh, share um, that we use for our NuGet packages that we want to use internally and not publish outside our walls. 
and then we tag the git rep repository or git repo with a unique ID that matches the assembly version. So that 4.0.10.95.2.2, we will tag our source code that way so that we can uh, get to that exact point in time, that source code that, that made that assembly. Here is what it looks like when we will queue a build or edit the build process. Um, I won't go into all these details, but you can see a lot of the parameters that we pass in. Um, whether we kick off a fit test, or whether we, um, you know, what the URL is to the to the fit test, if we have code coverage, we would provide those details over on the right hand side. One of the things that we're especially proud of is this deployment configuration. If I click that triple dot button there, it will launch into a custom editor that we built, and it's fairly easy to set this up. You just have it inherit from. Uh, it's it's just a window dialog that you inherit from and then you uh, can edit it as you see fit. This is doing nothing but generating some JSON that we pass in to the build configuration. We could edit this stuff by hand but it's a lot easier with this build editor. And all this is doing is deciding whether we deploy or or even package up a website and then down here we decide whether we deploy uh, um, a new spec file for a NuGet package that we need to deploy to our internal NuGet share. We are currently using four builds. Uh, continuous integration build, it's a, it's, it's a rolling build so it watches the master branch. If there are check-ins uh, that happen within a minute of each other, it won't kick off two builds. So that's what a rolling build is doing. Um, we have our system test build, which deploys to our testers and our business owners box, business analyst box. And right now it's set up manual. We did want to, we wanted to get to a continuous delivery model with this. So we've been experimenting with um, once the CI build passes, then automatically merge into the system test branch. And then that would kick off a system test build, which would then, if that passed, merge into our pre-prod integrated build branch and, and so on and so forth but what's happened is that's disrupting our workflow so right now that's all manual but we have the opportunity to turn that on when we feel more comfortable with these builds happening as frequently as the check-ins happen we also do a nightly build which is just a copy of the of the continuous integration build it, the reason why we schedule that nightly is because we're not always working on projects uh, every project that our team uh, owns and so it's good to know if your unit tests are starting to fail. It's good to have like a canary in the coal mine to let you know, hey, the uh, our you know our customer search project, the unit test started failing last week. We need to open that up and see what's going on. So that's what that nightly build is doing for us. I uh, want to talk a little bit now about how you set up your projects, your users, and, and stuff in uh, Visual Studio Online. Uh, first, if you haven't created a project in Visual Studio Online, it's very simple. First you go to visualstudio.com and if you have your Microsoft credentials all ready to go, just sign in. If you haven't set that up, you can create create those account uh, by you know, setting up this your credentials using this sign up now link. When you follow that, you get your, uh, your login page and then you can come over here and click uh, create a free account now over here in the corner. And when you click that, you get a chance to name your uh, account name, and you just name it after your company. Um, call it whatever makes sense for your organization. You have up to five free users, so if you just wanted to create your own personal account, feel free to do that. Just try it out. Uh, when you are on on there, you have your account. You can create your first project, and it will give you uh, this simple screen to fill in. Give the project a name type in a description and then you choose your source control and I am using uh, git on our team and that's the point of this talk I'll talk more about git in uh, and versus team foundation version control and then you can choose your process template going forward um, here's how you create users uh, when you first log in you just click on this manage link and then you can add users very simply Type in their email address. They don't have to be accounts on the system. They can be any email address out there in the internet. And it will automatically send uh, a, an invite to them. To, and they can click on the link in there and activate their account through that. 
this is uh, this is how simple it is. If if they are recognizing the system, they would see their avatar and and uh, just add them to your project um, if, without sending the email. Now, here's your you list your members. If they have avatars, it'll show them. Here's how you can do some more fine tuning on your members. You can set up uh, groups by clicking on this manage button and then you come over here to a control panel come over here to the security tab and click that and this is where we're going to add a group called admins click on the create VSO group give it a name type in a description I don't know you know I've never seen a good description on these but type in a description if you like and here it is so you see it on the left hand side admins we can view the members of that group and we'll see that it's empty so let's like this let's let this admin group have some friends. I click add users. I can just choose by the drop down there or type in something, but we'll just check off the names when a browse. I'll add Bill and Jane and save those changes. And there you have it. They're in our group and in the admin group. But maybe uh but they're not doing anything yet. They're just in a group, which is anyone can add to a group, but let's let's actually add them to a different group to show how that works. So you go to it, say add VSO group, you can browse, show you there's a lot of groups out of the box. <clears throat> the only one in here that I added was admins. Check in that. And here we go, add them to the project. If I want to view uh, who the members of the group or, or I just click on the the members of tab at the top and you can quickly see who is in this group and what groups they're parts a, a part of. Easy peasy. That's how you set up your users and your groups in Visual Studio Online.